It's gonna be tough because Targa is playing so well in the NASL. And I do think that he's a player as well who studies his opponent. And I think Vydra in general plays a pretty predictable PBZ style these days. But I'm still going with Vydra. Well, I'm gonna go with Targa because he's the, he's the thunder from down under. <laughs> and also from Norway. Which he's like, he's intercontinental north. thunder. <laughs> Smart. And uh, also, he's just been playing so well. Best player in the world that connects to the internet via a wireless connection on his cell phone. Yeah, Targa is 2-2 in the division right now. I believe White Rice 2-2 uh, as well, but I could be mistaken. Am I mistaken, Ben? Did you do your homework for once? Yes. Well no, actually, I don't, I don't know. Okay, well, I think both these players are 2-2. Targa is definitely 2-2, and White Rice, as far as I remember, as well. So... This is a uh, game okay. which is played I'll out in the I'll middle of the that. division. I'll come from that for you real quick. He's a good guy. But of course, once you start off 3-2 in the season, you still have your playoff dreams alive. And of course, you can win quite some money in the regular season with the $150 for every single best of three. But the real money ban is made in the playoffs. 2-2 two, two to 1-2. Mm -hmm. It's right here. See? Oh, white rice fell. Yeah, but that's not updated yet, man. It's two and They're both played 2-2. Two, two. So I was right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Target versus Jinra. Yes. That one has not been added to the uh, to the database yet. We saw White Draw earlier this season as well. Um, PBZ against Chef. And what I try to say is like when I think that, and we saw him against Warner as well, even though we did not cast those games, uh, but the Fro Torp did. Uh, what I try to say with predictable style is that White Draw is like so known right now to get those quick three nexuses up. He really tries to get away with it every single time, six minutes, 30 seconds. And there are just different ways to deal with that. And I think that Tigers probably has something prepared. I can only imagine that he does. And if Vydra plays the exact same style as he displayed in the previous best of threes, I think Targa might be able to hit some sweet timings. Uh, yeah, I think I think you could be on to something there, Kev. A couple lanes about to pop out for Targa. They'll get rid of this probe, and then uh, I suspect we'll see a quick third hatch for our Zerg player. Yeah, of course. Of course, our final game of the day is supposed to be MC versus Puzzle. Uh, that one should hopefully be played live. Yep. I believe that we were uh, still searching MC in action, but hopefully we will be able to display him, and I think it should be possible because he had so much time actually to show up right now because the previous games were so extremely long, so hopefully we will be able to broadcast the PvP between MC and Pozo after this series, and of course, after that, it's time for the Sunday Showdown. Sase versus Puma. $2,000, man. Not bad. Not bad at all. And uh, I really can't wait to see how those guys match up against one another. Yeah, me neither. I think it's so hard to predict. I ask people um, to tweet me predictions. If you want, you can still do that. Who do you think uh, is going to win, guys? Saz or Puma? Let us know at twitter.com slash MrBitterTV or twitter.com slash RotterDam08. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys think. So far, Ben, it was pretty 50-50. A lot of Swedish guys were cheering for Saz, of course, but also had quite some Puma predictions. Uh, it's impossible to bet against Puma, man. He just does not win at NASL events. Lose. Does not lose at NASL events. <laughs> <laughs> I think a player who won more than 80k in this w in this league, I think you can say that he does win <laughs> in NASL events. It's like normally when we have like a Sunday showdown, we we send one of the casters to pick players up at the airport, but because Puma is such a high roller, we send like uh, a Hummer limo. <laughs> that is actually not true. So I don't How know do you know? <laughs> we went to get him and he was gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's not because we sent a Hummer limo. You were maybe. <laughs> Vydra is going to rally uh, <laughs> a Zealot and Stalker, I guess, across the map. There's an Overlord as well in the main base right now. I'm curious to see how Vydra is going to follow this up, man. Doesn't he doesn't didn't really throw down any attack yet. He's on two assimilators so far. I think he's going to take one of these real, real soon, though. Target being very active Stargate with this opening. Overlord, but he does not manage to see the Stargate starting. Yeah, this is different than uh, how Vydra plays on Daybreak. Maybe he feels that it's harder on a map like Antigua to take three Nexus is really quick, because the moment you open up with a Stargate, that's too big of an investment to also try to get a really quick third Nexus off, so why is this kind of play different? He's one of those guys who can make Stargate play work really, really well, that you kind of wonder about why does it work so well. When I watch MC does it, uh, it works very well. When Wydra does it, it works very well. When I do it, there are like three Queens and two Spore Crawlers. Targa. So actively scouting. This Overlord is a hero, Kev. Sees the Stargate. Targa knows exactly what's coming. And yeah. White Ra. You might actually able to be even, even able to see what White Ra is going to produce. No, White Ra waits on purpose. Well, it's going to be a Void Ray. We can see that, of course, the little image in the Stargate. Yep. Targa saw it too, so he knows. Yeah. Uh, so what is Targa going to have back home to deal with it? Well, he's already got three queens out. He's, he's going to get a couple extra queens. And he's going to get a couple of extra drones, because the real answer to Stargate play is um, 
his drones, of course, man. Here we can see Whitera uh, asking for a pause. Of course, this was a replay cast, as we mentioned before. The previous game was live, and MC versus what Puzzle. What little face that Targa made? It's a sad beer face. I, I think it's know. a fish. Uh, I think he mixed it up. The thing on the right is a fish. Okay, but can you focus on the game? I'm just saying. It's definitely a fish. Okay, it is a fish. White Rouse first stalker crossing the middle of the map right now. Just going to see exactly what he has in store for him. Getting plus one. And, uh, hmm. Do you think White Rouse is going to try to take a third off of this, or is he going to just go all in with the Void Ray? Mm. I mean, on the Ohana, he always just tries to do a lot of damage and then at least follows up with really big two base aggression and at least wow. try to take uh, out one base of Proto. Queens oh, are so good now. Yeah, Queens are really good. They just are like Stalkers, man. Stalker can't even really trade with the Queen. Well, it's going to be hard to outmake her now. Void Ray is going to arrive, but uh, this time White Ray won't be able to achieve all that much with the Void Ray. There are three Queens over here. There is two Spork, uh, one Spork Crawler as well and one Spine Crawler. So now I really wonder, where are you going to take this wide run? He's adding a couple of more gates, but so far you can say that this uh, Stargate has been absolutely useless. Speed is almost ready for the Zerglings. I guess mm. he wants to make sure that wide is not expanding super greedy. Look white at this. up to four gate robo. To 18 more drones. 15 more drones on the way for Targa. As wow. I said, man, the, the counter to Stargate play is drones and... Targa seems to know. Targa seems to he definitely know. He's got the memo. He's sitting on about 75 drones right now and he's got a couple more about to pop out. Why do I found a little hole though in the target's defense? Where are all your queens, Targa? Gonna bring them from the low ground? I'm not sure if that's the best idea. He has to be careful with this single queen. This is a little bit sloppy from Targa. He's gonna end up losing this queen right now. He's gonna use Graviton Bean, and this is not good because he might actually end up losing the Roach for his own. Okay, here come the queens. They're pretty quick when they're on creep. Well, Ben, it's gonna be pretty close. Yeah, it'll be close, but I feel like if yeah, White Ross sticks transfuse. around to kill the Roach one, he might end up losing the Void Ray. Yeah, and he has Transfuse as well. Look at Targa. Targa's just baiting this. Yeah, Fresh Fuse is going down and now he should be able to kill the Void Ray. Yes, he is able to kill the Void yes, Ray. Yes, he does. Man, that was a really nice bait. He waited on purpose with an inject for an extra long time, trying to get additional damage. Nicely done by Tar, mm. playing some great StarCraft. Yeah, White Ray plays pretty different right now. The target didn't really do all that much. He's still going to try to go up to three bases. But he's only at 54 probes against 80-something drones of Targa. And I yeah. think Wydra is going to need a small miracle to stay yeah. alive. This is kind of old school Stargate play, and it doesn't really work these days. Targa now, all he has to do is make r make units. He, he doesn't have to make any more drones. He's at 83 already. He can just take bases and build units. And uh, the chance of White Raw holding a big, you know, 180 supply attack, pretty slim, Kev. Yep, White Raw is going to try to be as annoying as possible with these Phoenixes, lift up as many roaches as possible, but it just doesn't really change anything in the long run because a couple of roaches cost nothing. And these phoenixes were much, uh, 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 much bigger of an investment. Uh, killing off these overlords will actually help because Targa is already almost supply block. He's making four overlords at once and a lot of hydras as well. Yeah, and uh, this is going to be just fine. If he attacks these hydras straight away, White Row will not have any colossi out. Hydras do pop. Yeah. There is a robotics bay on the map though, but uh, White Row is not producing a colossi yet. He's still producing immortals, and I don't think White Row is aware of the hydralis. Yeah, he saw the hydralis then, so <laughs> lol. He saw it when it was really tiny. Look at this. Whee. And Target is going to move right out. <laughs> Ooh, why do I end up losing one Phoenix? So now he's definitely aware of all the Hydras that are on the map. Ah, oh, Target, you cannot make fighters and then sit back. That's okay, now he's moving. I Good. <laughs> you want to say that someone's style? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> TT1 said it, not us, man. <laughs> Wydra is getting a wall over here as well with three gates. He has one cannon, but Wydra is going to mm. need really, really good force skills, and I don't even think that's going to be enough. Targa has maxed out right now, Ben, below 13, 13 minutes, and his army supply is doubling the army supply. Wydra has more DPS as well. Oh, Targa. Yeah, we've seen this situation unfold uh, countless times before, Kev. This is what happens when Azurga is allowed to macro freely. He's just going to steamroll right through White Ra's army. There's no chance of White Ra holding. And Targa, wow. very, very convincingly on Antigua. Oh, he's playing so good in the NSL, man. He's just steamrolling White Rod right now. This is as one-sided as the game could potentially be. We finally have a Colossus. Be careful, White Rod. I guess it doesn't well, really matter. where you want to be, Mr. Colossus. He doesn't have Thermal Lens yet. White Rod just calls GG well played. First game goes very one-sidedly yeah, Targa. Targa. Sits back, drones up, uses the, the Queens to keep the Void Ray at bay, and, uh, and then makes a lot of units and wins. So... Yeah, that was like, like like I already said once. That felt like a very old school style of PVZ, yeah. and just doesn't work that well these days. No, I guess I I think you, you might as well ignore the void right? Just go phoenixes only. You will at least be able to be more mobile and do something. And then I think he would have scouted um, 
The Hydrolis is going to quicker as well, and then he would have been able to get a Colossus quicker. But I don't think you can expand that quick against Royce Hydra if you open up Stargate. Yeah. As silly as it sounds, because 10 minutes is not that quick. But You've really got to sit up at the top of your ramp yeah. and wait until you have a Colossus or two out. Yeah, literally a Colossus or two, and then with forces you're going to be able to expand. And that's, of course, you're going to be heavily outmined there for a long uh, for a long time. But if a Zerg maxes out on Royce Hydra, that kind of evens out in the long run, because the first time you're going to fight, you're still supposed to crush him, or at least you're going to do very well. So, not the best game from White Robin. Huh? Tough, uh, tough stuff. He's going to have to step it up in game number two. That last one brought to you by iBuyPower PCs, the PCs that power the North American Star League. And our house. And our house. This is an iBuyPower PC. That's yeah. an iBuyPower PC. I still like the name iBuyPower. I think our switcher is using an iBuyPower PC. If I ever start my own car company, I'm going to call it iBuyPower <laughs> or iBuyCarPower. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, electronic cars, man, it's the future. We're going to play a commercial.